It's time now for perspective. Speaking at an emergency meeting of the UN Security Council on Monday, the executive director of UNICEF, which is the UN's children's agency, said that two-thirds of all people killed in Gaza in the past two and a half weeks have been women and children, with over 3,400 children killed and more than 6,300 injured. My guest today is UNICEF spokesperson Toby Fricker, who's based in Amman in Jordan. Thank you very much for joining us on France 24 today. Uh, the numbers that I just cited are startling. What is the situation like for children in Gaza right now? Yeah, you're right. The numbers are staggering uh, you know, and, and horrific. It translates to, on average, 420 children being killed or injured every day, you know, which is obviously horrific. Uh, what we're seeing is these hostilities taking place in very densely populated area. Whenever that happens, then children are at, at massive risk, of course. And that's why we're calling again, and we have been uh, since the start, you know, for all parties to you know, adhere to international humanitarian law, which are basically the laws of war. Uh, but at the same time, given the scale of the situation, not only of children being killed and injured, but also in terms of that access to, to basic services like safe water, uh, sanitation. Yeah, we need an immediate humanitarian ceasefire so we can also scale up uh, that access to life-saving supplies as quickly as possible. Could you give us um, a slightly more detailed idea of the state of medical facilities in Gaza right now? Yeah, I mean, I mean, the hospitals were struggling, let's say, even before this latest escalation. You know, it was very difficult uh, to get the resources in, to get the medical supplies that hospitals need. UNICEF, you know, we have been able to bring in some uh, supplies. We have been able to provide some you know, supplies for, for trauma, kids for surgeries. Uh, but it's but it's not en nowhere near enough. And the hospitals are, are struggling massively. The fuel is running low. It's been rationed what supplies are there at the moment. So the situation in the hospitals is dire. And let's not forget that um, you know, so-called everyday life needs to go on. And that means there are around about you know, 50,000 pregnant women, for example, who will be giving birth. Um, and you need services for that. You need services to treat children who may have cancer. Uh, these are you know, everyday health issues also need to be treated on top of the massive number of injuries that are arriving at hospitals. So the strain is absolutely massive. Now, UNICEF uh, oversees uh, water and sanitation issues for the UN and uh, in Gaza. I'd like to talk about each of those separately, if that's OK with you. Just how much access do Gaza Gazan civilians have to clean water right now? Yeah, so clean water is becoming a massive, massive issue. So let me just uh, yeah, give you an example. Our, one of our colleagues, Nesma, she has a four-year-old and a seven-year-old girl uh, who she's trying to look after in, in the Gaza Strip. And they were talking about out how for the last 10 days they've had to drink salty water and, and her children are dehydrated, they've got diarrhea. The children were saying, why, why, where's that, where's the water gone, the clean water, you know, why are we drinking this? And they don't even want to drink it for obvious reasons. Um, and the reason is that the desalination plants that uh, essentially produce the safe water, you are functioning at very, very low capacity. UNICEF has a, a large desalination plant that we've been running in the Gaza Strip for, for many years. Um, and it's running at you. The capacity is you know, around about five percent. You know, so it's very, very low. At the same time, as the executive director said to the Security Council yesterday, around 55 percent of all water infrastructure has been damaged or destroyed. So, of course, that has a massive impact on the ability to then provide safe water to, to across the, the Gaza Strip and to the population. So it's a huge challenge. Then on the on the sanitation front, you have people who have moved into very densely uh, populated shelters. Uh, with the UN Palestine uh, Refugee Agency, you have people living in, in schools and around hospitals, very densely populated. So, of course, you have sanit massive sanitation issues in, in those areas. You know, we've been trying to bring in some hygiene kits, trying to alleviate that a little bit. But, it, but, but, but it's just the needs are so immense and the challenge is so immense. And that's why we keep saying we need sort of sustained humanitarian access, not one off trucks or a few here and there, but it has to be sustained. And at a large level, there were hundreds of trucks going in each day before the current escalation. And we have been hearing reports in the last couple of days of raw sewage in the streets of Gaza. Just how badly has the enclave's sanitation infrastructure been damaged by the past two and a half weeks of Israeli airstrikes? Yeah, I mean, the sanitation system was, uh, was struggling even before you know, this crisis. Um, and uh, the water treatment plants, for example, would would, would work, they would stop, they would struggle to get power, they struggle to get fuel, even before the, the current crisis we're in. So it, this is a massive, massive concern because, of course, it's going to lead to the outbreak of, of diseases, cholera, and other issues that, that will come 
very quickly. Once sanitation breaks down, then you're really in trouble. So we're extremely concerned about the, the situation, you know, from a sanitation point, from a water point, and from an everyday life, being able to live every day is becoming harder and harder and more and more dire. Now, civilians uh, in Gaza have been repeatedly called upon by Israel to move from northern Gaza down uh, to southern Gaza. But that's not always an easy ask, to say the least, is it? No, I mean, as the UN Secretary General has, has called for, for that order to be rescinded, because you know, the, the Gaza Strip is a very small geographical area. It's already very, very densely populated. And you're asking people to move into other areas. It's extremely challenging. These are areas that are already overpopulated. You have 1.4 million people displaced, and you have more than 600,000 people in, in, in UNRWA uh, shelters. Um, and, that, and that is a, you know, a massive risk in terms of sort of the outbreak of disease, if we've just said providing access to essential services for life. And that's why the access is so important to getting supplies that can at least alleviate that suffering a little bit. And do you have any hope that those uh, pauses in fighting uh, will come about so that you can, as you say, get that much needed aid into Gaza? Do you have any hope? Well, I mean, we always have hope. We have hope for the, the children, uh, for children who are being killed and injured every day. That has to stop. You know, we have hope and we'll keep pushing uh, for this Im immediate humanitarian seesaw because it, it's affecting children. Every this should not be the lives of children. You know, we, we call for the immediate uh, release of children who are abducted, who need to be with their families. But the, the protection of every child uh, inside the Gaza Strip, wherever they are, is absolutely paramount now. And you did just mention the uh, Israeli uh, children, uh, including babies, who are kept um, in Gaza right now by Hamas. Um, what's your message to Hamas? You've spoken uh, at length about uh, the situation for uh, Palestinian children in Gaza. What's your message to Hamas? Well, I mean, our message, UNICEF and the UN message, is to immediately release uh, any civilian hostages, particularly children, which is a grave violation. These are children who should be at home uh, with their families, they should never be abducted in any conflict. Uh, and we call for that now, but we also call for the protection of all children everywhere uh, from, from the horror that they're living through right now. Toby Fricker, a spokesperson for UNICEF, the UN's uh, Children's Agency, thank you very much for taking the time to speak to us on France 24 today. Thank you.